Hi, and welcome to another episode of ECCB Connects, a production of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank to share with you who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. On this episode, we speak with information security analyst Gina Lake about some of the ways you can stay safe while using your mobile device and cell phone. Stay with us. We'll share more with you after the break. Hi, I'm Zena from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and you're watching ECCB Connects. Gina, welcome to ECCB Connects. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to be on the ECCB Connect stage. We enjoy having you as well. Gina, we live in an age where we spend so much more time online and we are connected more than ever. Uh, and we use our cell phones, our mobile devices to facilitate this disconnectedness. So we have to respond almost instantaneously to uh, an array of different things. We use our phones to check email, check our bank balances. We use it to do work because, you know, a lot of people know, especially in the COVID-19 age, are working from home and working remotely. And Absolutely. we use it for entertainment purposes. Our children, we pass it on so that when we just need a break, we pass our device on to our children so they can watch a movie and play some games. But I know because we connect to the internet, of course, there are some security considerations that come with using these devices that we have to pay attention to. And in fact, today we're going to get some questions from uh, persons in the region who want to know more about how to keep safe online when they use these mobile devices to connect. So we'll go to our first question out of Grenada. Hi, I've had WhatsApp messages from many different people saying that my phone can be hacked. Now, can my phone really be hacked? If so, how can I prevent this? Do you know that's an excellent question? Can your phone be hacked? And I've had a similar experience where I've gotten a WhatsApp message um, saying, you know, check this particular setting on my phone to ensure that I haven't been hacked. But can your phone really be hacked? How would you know? The short answer is yes, your phone really can be hacked. I think there's a common misconception that hacking and malware and, and viruses are reserved for PCs and laptops only. Right. And I'm here to say that that is, in fact, not so. So your phone can in fact be hacked and as you mentioned before our phones are really treasure troves of information on us as you said we use them to do everything we connect to online meetings i mean in addition to what we use phones for in a traditional sense which is to make calls we use them to connect to meetings we browse social media um, we we save our entire lives on our phones and so they're a treasure trove of information for us so it's important to know the signs the warning signs that you could be hacked um, it, there could also be warning signs of malware. As you and I joke just now, there could also be warning signs that your device is just old. And so I just want to touch on some of the warning signs that you should keep a keen eye out for. You want to look for anomalies in the behavior of the phone. So um, strange pop-ups on the device. You want to also pay attention to abnormalities as it relates to the functionality of the device. So if you find that the device is struggling to even load a basic web page, that might be an issue. Um, if you find that your apps are crashing every now and again, that could be an issue. If you notice that your data consumption is, is through the roof or your battery is draining even after you've just charged it, it could be a sign that something is running on the background that's pulling on the resources of the device. Like I said, these are signs that there could be something truly wrong with the device along the lines of being hacked or, or there could be malware on the device or viruses. It could also be the case that the device is old. <laughs> and so I think the best guidance I could give is that if you encounter any of these issues, if you see these warning signs that you take the device to your nearest mobile phone specialist and have them investigate and advise you accordingly. Some excellent points and, and issues to look out for in terms of our mobile devices. Um, you know, your battery draining, your data going through the roof, some things to make our minds go off and wonder, is something happening? And as a follow-up question that from the gentleman, he asks, now that we know, and you've answered that your phone, your mobile device can be hacked, how do you prevent it? How would we prevent it? Um, one of the first things I would, I would recommend doing as it relates to protecting your mobile phone from being hacked or from being exposed to malware or viruses is to ensure that you enable automatic updates. And so this means that when updates are released for your particular device and the apps on your particular device, they get installed immediately. 
And that means that you are reducing the time that your device and your apps are exposed to vulnerabilities. Another thing that um, is famously responsible for malware on devices is malicious mobile apps. And one of the ways in which you could avoid exposure to malicious mobile apps is by making sure that the apps that you install on your device come from the official app stores of Android, which is the Google Play Store, and Apple, which is the Apple App Store. That way, at least you know that the apps that you are installing on your device have been vetted by the service providers. So even after you've made sure that you have the most secure and the most up-to-date apps installed on your device, it doesn't stop there. Because the next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure you limit the access that these apps have to your phone. So when you install an app, or in the process of installing an app, it prompts you in terms of the things that it asks access to. Permission to because Permissions. some, some would ask you about your camera or your microphone. Right, correct. Right. You want to give these apps only the access that makes sense. Um, to limit your exposure to them. So, for instance, if I am installing a calculator app on my phone, for argument's sake, if that calculator app is requesting access to my contact list, I will look at it through my side eye. Because why would my calculator app need to know who my contacts are? Exactly. So you want to do this type of vetting when it comes to installing your apps. You also want to, having installed your apps, go back and audit them. Audit sounds very professional and, and you know, high-minded, but you didn't definitely want to go back and make sure you check the permissions of the apps that you have installed to make sure that the access that they have makes sense for the functionality that they provide. Right. And I can't speak, this isn't necessarily along the lines of hacking and malware, but I can't speak about mobile phone protections without taking a moment to preach the virtues of having your password enabled on your device. It would be very remiss of me if I didn't take a moment to say that in this day and age, in any age... You have to have a password. You have to have your, your device's password protected. Mobile phone 101. Mobile phone 101. Connectedness 101. Password protect your devices. Some excellent pointers. Um, and, and going back to the permissions about the apps, because often you, you, you download a game and it's asking you for permission for your mic and your camera and, and you. And your location. And your location. And why does my game need to know where I am? And I think sometimes we take it for granted. And because we just are ready to use the app, we just say yes, 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 yes without really taking the time to think about what, you know, what am I really allowing here right. to be accessed? We so, call that getting click happy. So you just happy. go through and say, accept, accept, accept. Right. Along the list of permissions, instead of truly thinking about, well, does this app really need this right. permission? You know? So we have to be mindful. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Do you know, following up on a point you made, sure. that it's important for us to be mindful of where we install our apps from. The sources are legitimate from the Google Play Store and the Apple Store as well. Because as you said, these apps sometimes can be the gateway for malicious and unintended activities getting onto our phones. Can you speak more about why it's important for us to be mindful about, about where we get our apps from? The vast majority of viruses and malware make their way onto our devices by way of, as I mentioned before, our installing malicious apps, poor internet browsing, and interacting with malicious emails or phishing emails, which is essentially just a fraudulent email that's getting you to perform some activity that will ultimately harm you. And while there is virtue in installing anti-malware and antivirus software or apps on your mobile phone, there is no substitute for just good cyber hygiene, good cyber smart practices. So that means making sure that the, the sites that you browse to are reputable and well known and don't bear malicious artifacts like viruses and malware. Making sure, as I mentioned before, that the apps that you install come from reputable places like the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And also making sure that in your email interactions, you don't interact with or respond to emails from unknown sources. Let's move on to our, our next, next question. question. Yes. I use my phone to do things such as sending emails and checking my bank account. Is it fine that I utilize a free uh, Wi-Fi to do those things? I'm glad the, the gentleman asked that question because I just want to recap that we now use our mobile phones like we do, like we use PCs and laptops. We now perform very sensitive transactions on our mobile phones. And with the advent of freely available public Wi-Fi, we could transact anywhere at any time. I actually want to encourage our viewers 
to avoid freely available public Wi-Fi, especially when performing sensitive transactions like performing online banking or making online purchases, because free, publicly available free Wi-Fi is generally very unsecure. And your very private and confidential information, such as your credit card details, could be intercepted along the way. So a better option, a safer option, is if you must perform these sensitive transactions while you're on the, on the road and away from a trusted internet connection, is to do it via your, your mobile data plan. Better to be safe than sorry. Better to be safe than sorry. I mean, I would say wait until you're home. But, you know, if you have a if really... If you must. If you must. And if you, you have... It's better to use your data. Yes. Let's go to our next question. Yes. Sometimes I get text messages with links in them and phone calls from strange numbers. Should I open these messages or answer these calls? Janelle, this is something I think most of us with a cell phone have experienced. We get these text messages with links in them. Sometimes they're from senders we know, but often from unknown senders. And then we get calls, strange numbers coming up on our phone. Should we open these text messages or take these calls? Just as with the use of PCs and laptops, when we're interacting with email messages, we give the good guidance that you really shouldn't respond to anything that comes from someone you don't know. The same good guidance could, apply to, could be applied to our mobile phones. It's little known, but phishing and fraudulent activity could take place on a mobile phone by way of SMS messages and phone calls, um, unwanted phone calls. So if you do receive SMS messages or calls from numbers you don't know, the best guidance that you could observe is to ignore them because that could be a phishing message that's coming to you via SMS. It could be a fraudulent call and you don't want to be exposed to fraudulent activity. You don't want to lose money by way of a phishing scam. You also don't want to register your number as operational to someone who is spamming you. So the best guidance I could give is to ignore. Gina, let's go to our final question for today's okay. episode. I'm sad it's our final question, but okay, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear the question. I let my child use my device to play games and watch videos. How can I keep my child from accessing my apps and information? And how do I protect their privacy and make sure the apps that they use are safe? This is a good one for parents and because, and, and, uh, you know, we let our children and sometimes even if we don't let them, if we don't have a password or they know our passwords because they are very smart like that, they, they just swipe up our devices and they're, they're in the corner playing a game or, or looking at a video. So how do we keep our information safe from them? And how do we make sure that when they surf or they are interacting with our devices that they are protected? First things first, how do we keep our information safe from our kids? Because you're right, they take our phones they think they belong to them, they use them at will. Um, so one of the first things you should do is, first of all, ensure that your device is password protected so that you control when your child is able to gain access to your device. The next thing you want to do is make sure that the apps where your most private and confidential and sensitive information is stored, like your email account, your online banking account, these types of things, these apps where you would normally perform these transactions, you want to make sure that those are password protected so that even if the child is using your device, they would then need to authenticate into those apps in order to gain access to your private and confidential information. All right, so if you know for sure that you're sharing your device, I know some of them give you the option to automatically save your password right. to access. That's, that's not recommended if you're going to be sharing your device with some somebody else your child or otherwise so that they wouldn't be able to just absolutely go in and get your information absolutely great and the follow-up part now how do you ensure that your child stays safe you know like we've said malicious activities there are good guys and bad guys out there online so if i'm get, letting my child interact play online how do i make sure that they are safe right that's a really good question now because as we all know our kids they have devices they use our devices, as we just mentioned. So how do we protect our kids when they're online? Because they're connected, they're online, they're exposed to the public internet. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure that you have parental controls enabled on your device. And what these um, controls would help to do, they help to limit the child's exposure to things like adult content as they're browsing the internet. You want to make sure also that the apps that are installed for the child to play with, first of all, are vetted, researched, and installed by you 
as opposed to the child. So you want to make sure that you control what goes on to that device. The next thing that you want to do as we speak about apps that are installed on the devices, you want to make sure you limit or restrict in-app purchases so that the child can't just run up a huge bill and charge it to your credit card. <laughs> and then you it get happens. sticker shot next it, month. It happens, it happens. Because you see all of these gaming charges and you know you weren't gaming. So to avoid you experiencing sticker shock next month when you receive your credit card bill and you see these charges for a game that you know you weren't playing, right. what you want to do is to make sure you disable in-app purchases. So in addition to the technical controls that we just spoke about, you also want to have conversations with your child about good cyber practices. So you want to teach them about good, safe internet browsing. Um, you want to encourage them to limit their browsing to reputable websites. You want to encourage them to be mindful of what they post on social media. Um, you don't want them posting anything that's private or confidential or sensitive. Um, you also want to make sure that they observe good cyber hygiene where their credentials are concerned, their credentials to their email accounts if they're old enough to have email accounts, to their social media pages if they're old enough to have social media pages. So these are the types of conversations that you need to have to ensure that your child is secure as they are connected and online in this new connected world that we live in. Because they too need to be protected. They too need to be protected, more so than us. Yeah. <laughs> Janelle, thank you for speaking with us today on ECCB Connects and for answering the questions from our viewers. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. And please, I look forward to coming back to answering more questions in the future. Definitely. And from what you've said, you know, cybersecurity and staying safe on our mobile devices really comes down to making good decisions and thinking before we act or click. Indeed. Think before you click. I like so that. thank you once again. Thank you. You're watching ECCB Connects. That's it for this week's episode of ECCB Connects. Be sure to stay connected with us on social media and join us next week when we bring you another program. Thanks for watching.